Rub up your engines! It's a Camry up north, LE. No, he's worried about a couple of things, which probably won't mean much of anything because it is a Camry. This is one, though, that you got to be leery of. Look under the hood, and yeah, who wants to buy these expensive struts? He's got a stick in the trunk that he uses. You'll see, this is the VVTI 16 valve four cylinder engine, but unfortunately, it is the dreaded 2AZ FE. 2.4 liter engine. So indeed it does burn oil. Not a ton of oil, but you have to add oil. And this is the typical problem that engine had. The compression ring on the top is fine. So they run fine. They get the same gas mods they ever got. But under it are two rings. There's a wiper ring, an oil control ring. Those wear, and when they wear, it makes it burn some oil. He just adds the oil, just like my grandson does. And as long as you keep adding the oil, you can basically drive them forever. The real problem with people who have blown the engines on these, these are people that they've owned Toyotas, right? So their idea of maintenance is putting gas in the tank. <laughs> Changes the oil once in a while, right? I had a customer with the same exact car, almost blew the engine. Brought it to me and it was running like crap, rattling. I said, what have you done? Check that there's hardly any oil in the engine. When I drained the oil, only half a quart came out, right? So I said, when did you check your oil? She said, oh, I never checked my oil. She said, I had it changed two months ago. Well, she had driven all over the place, right? She had driven to California and back, and it was burning oil. She never checked it. She had half a quart left. Luckily, I filled it up, and the noise went away, and she drove it for years after. She was lucky, but she was spoiled being a Toyota driver and never checked the oil. The real problem with this is, if you can own one, you gotta check the oil. Add the oil as it burns out. As long as you add it, you're not really gonna have any problems. But if you don't have it, boom goes the engine. They have excellent transmissions that can last forever. And this is the bottom of the line one, so it's got plastic hubcaps on it. You know, from a distance, they look okay. It's got cloth seats, because it's a basic one. You know, they got a lot of room. They go in the back. They got all kinds of room in the trunk. He's got a whole water supply here. The gigantic trunks. You can pop the seats down, have more room. Just bought used. Massachusetts car. You notice the body's all clean. There's no rust on that. So I don't how to rust proof them. The only real problems are the bare metal things. You can see the steel wheels are rusting, but they don't leak, so who cares? He had to replace the rotors because they got rotten away. He said he's going to replace the back rotors because they're getting old and rotting away too. And living in Massachusetts, they're kind of anal about their car inspections. The exhaust had some leaks. He had to get that fixed because it had rotted away. Unlike my almost 30 year old Celica, he still got the original exhaust system on it because I lived in Texas and Tennessee. These will be eaten out, and originally they were talking about two grand. And he got them down to about 400 bucks to fix the parts that need. So that's what you got to worry about these if you live up north is the bare steel parts will rust. You'll have to replace them. The actual body, no. Toyota, it's a process when they make them using positive and negative electric paint, soaking them in, even gets inside the frame, and they really don't have a rust problem. It was only those full framed Tacomas and Forerunners and Tundras that had frame problems. Those were total frames. Those weren't unibody like this. They had their own frames, and they didn't coat them right. A lot of them rusted out, but with the Camrys, no, it's a unibody construction. The whole body's a frame, and they really don't have rust problems with that because they're coated. So it's out with a big scan tool, and we'll see what shape this thing is in. As per usual, we'll plug it in, turn the key on, and we'll do diagnostics. It already detected it in. Now it's decoding it, and you can see Camry North America 2009 2AZ, and this one was made in Kentucky. Well, this does a topology scan, so. We'll start scanning it. We'll look around. Still got the original CD player. No sunroof because it's the base model. And the cloth seats. Hey, they're still comfy and they're not worn out. Cloth seats do last a long time. Here we have a typical Toyota Camry. It's only got one code. And that's for the stupid tire monitoring system. It doesn't ever last very long. When they're as old as this, something always breaks on them. And we can see data from transmitter one not received. We really don't care. Tire pressure gauges are cheap. <laughs> you don't expect that system to last that long. We'll erase it anyways. And now we'll start her up. And we'll look at live data. Here we go. We will go to the ECM live data. I don't know why they have to tell you that stuff. You already know it. As usual, black's good, red's bad. 
Let's see what shape this thing is in. See the short term fuel trim. Okay, it's adding 4.6%. And you'll often see this on older Camrys. After all, this thing's got 182,437 miles on it. Now, if you clean the fuel injectors, you probably get it to run a little bit richer. It's running just that tiny bit lean. But my experience is, leave it alone. It runs good. It gets good gas mileage. As these things age, they'll often run a little bit lean, which is better because you'll get a little bit better gas mileage. On the highway, you're going to get mid-20s with this thing. You know, it's not bad compared to modern cars. It's crazy because the new Camrys, you can get in the upper 30s gas mileage it's a completely different design but these old ones hey they do have a tendency of lasting forever they're much simpler there's much less things to go wrong uh, we really don't care about that little bit off we'll look at more data the mass airflow sensors got good data okay those temperatures normal throttle systems fine everything's looking pretty hunky dory transmission shift data is good misfire test complete it's a toyota so it doesn't have any misfires either. Variable valve timing system's working. Speed of all cylinders are the same. As I said, misfire counts zero for them all. So, other than burning some oil, this thing's in really good shape. And they can still go for years that way. They'll just burn oil. Toyota will not replace them anymore. They used to, but this thing's got 182,000 plus on it. They're not going to fix it for free anymore. They should have at some point in time. They didn't. You can still drive the things. Well, kind of evil swinery from Toyota here. Today's owner just told me the previous owner took it to Toyota. They sealed the cap, did a test and said, it doesn't consume enough oil for us to fix it. Yeah, well, Toyota, you were scumbags on that one. Just like like some of the customers of mine. Guy in Illinois got a frame for his Tundra because it rotted away. Guy in Indiana had the same year Tundra with a rotten frame and he didn't fix it. So, hey, I knew. That's all I got to say. Now, it doesn't ride bad. You know, it's an old car and the struts are old. A little bouncy wouncy. These things are always known for that. But it's still a stable car for driving around. He's trying to hear a particular sound. I don't hear it yet. It rides smooth. The wheel bearings are fine. They're not making any noises. I mean, these things virtually can run forever. Okay, it actually made the noise. It's just the catalytic converter and the shield rattling a little. He's driven it so long, it's hot, it's not rattling, but it did rattle. Nothing to worry about. And he's in luck, because he's in Massachusetts, and they got a 15-year law. Once they're over 15 years old, they don't do emissions testing. And guess what? This baby just turned 15. So, he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. That's the advantage of having an old car in a state that does emissions. When you get to a point that they don't do them anymore, you don't have to worry about any of that crap. The only thing wrong with this car was a little rattly noise in the cat, and the tire pressure monitoring system doesn't work anymore. Who cares? Tire pressure gauges are cheap. You want to buy all four sensors, reprogram them. It's going to cost you a ton of money. Who cares? Get your little gauge. Check it yourself. These things are virtually indestructible. This particular one, sadly enough, is the one that burnt oil for two or three years of production but it still runs perfectly fine. Although it was kind of evil that Toyota for the previous owner did a test, sealed the system and said, no, it doesn't burn enough oil. We're not gonna fix it for free. So shame on you, Toyota. You generally make great cars, but you should stand behind them better when you screw up, cause you know you screwed up on these engines. Own up to it, Toyota. Stop screwing your customers over because eventually, if you keep doing it, people will buy somebody else's car. They don't buy your cars because they love Japanese. They buy them because they're dependable cars. And if they become not dependable, people will buy other cars. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Keyshawn41 says, should I buy this used SUV? Looking at a Lexus NX200T 2015, 72,000 miles. Looks clean, but the side body was modified due to an accident, but it has a clean title. They want 18 grand. Should I buy it? I wouldn't buy it. 18 grand for one that's been wrecked that's nine years old no and anyways it's a 200t that's the worst Lexus it's just that stupid four-cylinder turbo that they're underpowered they don't run all that great to begin with and for eighteen thousand dollars I'd look for something better than that you know you don't want something that's been smashed then who knows what is gonna go on electronically modern cars have so many computer wires going everywhere you even get the door smashed and that can end up causing problems how a car runs because it feeds back to the computer shorts out circuits no 
I mean, if it had been clean and never been wrecked, eh, I don't know. 72,000 miles is nine years old. I probably maybe offer them 10, but 18 that's been wrecked, run away from them. They want too much for a car that's been wrecked. And it's just one of the junky four cylinder turbos, which aren't that good to begin with. You want a Lexus, get a six cylinder engine. They're fours. Bleh. They're not that good. I've had people buy the fours. They said the same thing. They said, we wish we would have gotten one with a six. Because the fours, eh, they rattled too much. They didn't have the power. They just didn't have it. And even though they're turbocharged, a turbocharged Ford does not have the smooth power of a six-cylinder engine. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.